This episode of The Casual is brought to you in part by Squarespace. For all your website needs, Squarespace delivers it in an all-around package to help you build a beautiful, integrated online presence. When Obey Clothing launched in 2001, designer Shepard Ferry probably didn't think his brand was going to exponentially explode the way that it did. And he probably didn't think that once it did, it would have such a precipitous downfall in basically the sphere of influence. Today though, on Unscripted, we're gonna talk about Obey's fall from popular grace and how future brands can shield themselves from making the same mistakes that they did. I'm your boy, Reggie Casual. This is Unscripted, let's get it. So imagine you're in a place like Rhode Island, the smallest state in the union. If you're from the United States, you're taking an art course at your college and you're a designer. So you create a sticker just for fun. And due to your rebellious skate background, you go all over the place, plastering the stickers everywhere. You're a rebel, you do that stuff. Then all of a sudden people want your stickers so they can do the same damn thing. So they buy it from you. That's what Shepard Ferry did. Whether he knew it or not, Ferry was engaging with a form of guerrilla marketing. And because the message obey was perceived to have a deeper meaning by other rebellious youth, it resonated. Now, once Shep saw the success of the stickers, he moved on to clothing, namely tees and the like, and they sold too. And before you know it, the brand is being sold in PacSun, Urban Outfitters, and online, it's crazy, but, but hold up. I skipped a bit. You see, the early to late 2000s were a special period. Skate was still popular, but less mainstream than it is today. It was more or less riding the coattails of its grungy punk 90s past. But by the mid 2000s, skaters were becoming household names. Case in point, everybody knows who Tony Hawk is. I mean, if you haven't played the game, then you are missing out. And by 2008, 2009, we all know what happened. Streetwear started blowing the hell up, as did Obey. But Obey actually holds a special position as it became popular because of another label. It was Supreme. Those of you out there who don't know, you might be wondering how Supreme made Obey more popular. You see, Supreme is extremely limited and it was becoming hard to get. However, Obey shared a very similar aesthetic and had already established itself as a full-on player in the streetwear game. So it didn't come off as copying Supreme so much so as it became the alternative Supreme that was easily accessible. Whether we're talking about Plunder or the ill-fated Karma Loop, Urban Outfitters, PacSun, Obey was available and ready. And it was huge. There was a distinct look. We all know the look. We can go back and say, yep, yeah, that's the Obey look. It ran its course in the transphere, but how the hell did it just fall off the side of the earth? At least in popularity. But before we explain all that, let's get in a word from Squarespace so you can learn how to start off right, at least your website. Let's get to it. In the fashion industry, the competition is fierce and your presentation has to look solid from jump. That's where Squarespace comes in. Beautifully designed templates, easy to use web building tools and social integration make Squarespace the perfect choice for the budding entrepreneur or even the savvy professional. Plus, by using our link squarespace.com slash the casual, you could save 10% when you start. So get that business off the ground the right way and use Squarespace today. Okay, so in order to understand Obey's fall from grace, we have to take a look at two labels, right? One is Supreme, of course. Now, Supreme was limited, it was hard to get, so exclusivity keeps it relevant. But another label was actually doing the same thing Obey was doing, the same strategy, and it was beginning to lose influence as well. Now, that brand was Stussy. You see, Stussy was also selling in many of the same places as Obey and they were doing relatively well as far as sales were concerned. However, the upper management at Stussy started seeing the writing on the wall. They too started to realize that they were becoming too accessible. So they willingly pulled the brand off the shelves of their third party sellers so as to not overextend the brand. This in short contributed to a slow but steady rise in the reemergence of Stussy as a player in streetwear, back in the driver's seat with great collections to boot. Obey, on the other hand, did not follow this strategy. And as a result, the trends changed. And as people got older, Obey became less about a deep message and more about mainstream appeal for the cheap. 
And as a brand, you almost never want to be associated with mainstream and cheap at the same time. Now, this is not to say Obey doesn't still sell. It actually does because it's in operation, but it's clearly not as relevant as the moment when it was everywhere. So what is this called exactly? Well, it's time to put our business cap on. It's smart. This is what we call brand oversaturation. In layman's terms, it's essentially your brand losing its meaning because too many people associate it with mainstream. When a brand reaches oversaturation, it is incredibly hard to bring it back to respectability. Why is this? Because the people that initially follow the brand for its meaning now know it has lost it. And the ones who tagged along now know it's no longer cool because the people who initially liked it know it's lost its meaning. It's a sad, sad combination of things. But this is a note. It's not to say that the tactic of oversaturation can't be utilized to create a quick buck. There's a lot of brands that do this, but Obey was actually in a pretty sweet position to even challenge Supreme. But because the company chose to be accessible to everyone and it was sold nearly everywhere, it was far too easy for people to wear the same thing over and over and over and over again. Now, how does a new brand avoid this fate? You must be careful not to be in a rush to sell everywhere to everyone unless that's your intention. Choose your buyers and retailers carefully. Create an air of perceived exclusivity. Cater to your customer rather than to everyone. You never want your brand to become one of those pickup shirt brands. Like you think the shirt is cool, but it's not something you would really care to indulge in on a consistent basis. Like you just like that shirt, but you don't really care about the brand. Now, brands like Palace and Supreme, and now even Stussy, have made it a point to primarily sell at their very own locations, and they maintain this curated control of the reach of their brand, mainly because they want to stay in the business competitively, and they also want to entice new customers as their current base gets older and maybe changes their buying habits. Because let's be real, it's not like Obey is any different than labels like Supreme and Stussy. In fact, the aesthetic is very similar. The entire downfall of its popularity was due to poorly executed management of the brand's reach. So you have to remember the three C's, curate, connect, and be cautious. It'll save you the horror of owning something that could eventually be irrelevant. But if you want more info on the minutia of brand oversaturation and building a lean, mean clothing business machine, become a member here on YouTube or on Patreon and get even more content and overtime right after this regarding this topic. And if there's any other brand that you'd like to explore the business side of, state it in the comments along with any questions or comments you might have. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. よろしくお願いします。And I will see you guys in a minute. I'm out.